Hi. Hi, Hi Natalie. <laughs> Hi, Natalie. We thought that we'll never get over losing you on Game of Thrones because your performance is just etched in our mind. But luckily, <laughs> we got you for this so clever and so hilarious Die Hard. And, you know, with Kevin Hart and John Travolta, and you're holding your own against those two giants. But I'm sure you don't want to talk about it because it probably was a boring shoot, right? So boring. I mean, <laughs> I basically slept all the way through it. No, it was, uh, oh wow, it was such a joy, such a fun one um, and really unexpected. It kind of happened quite last minute and it was like, Suddenly, I was in Atlanta with Kevin Hart and John Travolta. Oh my God! You know, it's sort of, I know. It blew my mind a bit. I it wasn't until actually, I I got home and it was about a week later, and I like phoned my mum and went, I just did a thing with Kevin Hart and John Travolta. Like it was crazy. But, yeah. Great. Well, you know, with Kevin and John Travolta, it's just kind of over the top in the way that is just so amazing. But um, before we, we have a lot of question about that series and your work in it and other work, but before we want to know, how did you start in the business? Wow, um, I don't really know. <laughs> I do know, like I actually just got into performing arts and dancing, singing, acting. It was just like a fun hobby. Like my mom wanted my sister and I to have um you know extra curricular activities and it was really just like a fun thing to do and i was quite a shy kid and so you know going to dance going to acting classes and all of that kind of helped me build confidence away from her i'm i was i am still um, a huge mummy's girl so you know like <laughs> being away from her was so traumatic as a kid and she was like i need to do something about this this child like she keeps up like breaking down every time I have to leave her anywhere. So, <laughs> so the sort of dance classes, singing, acting, it sort of helped me come out of my shell a bit. And then it just was this fun thing that we did. And like, we used to have this uh, newspaper in England called The Stage. I don't know if it still exists or if it's just online now. And they used to post like auditions for shows, for commercials, for, you know, TV shows, it was crazy. You'd like look through it and my mum would circle ones that weren't like two huge commitments because she was quite particular about school. So she was like, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? And I'd be like, yeah, sure. Or no, not really feeling that. And then it became this sort of thing we did when we wanted to. And then, yeah. And then I guess the sort of turning point for me was when I got cast in the stage show, The Lion King, when it first moved to London. I was like 10 years old in this like huge production with all these in like incredible people like Julie Taymor was there to teach us the show, Lebo M and all these incredible artists. And I, and I think that's when I went, oh, wow. Yeah, this is what I'm, I want to do. I want to be in the, in something like keep doing this is whatever this feeling is. I want to keep doing it. And then, yeah. And then I just went for auditions when they didn't interrupt school too much. And then, <laughs> And then I sort of got my big break, so to speak, in um, the UK when I was 17 and I went and did a TV show. So that was pretty cool. And now I'm still here, somehow. <laughs> I know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with no, no skills and talent and beauty to show. Yeah, very strange. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> I mean, listen, that's very sweet of you, but honestly, like that is, they, that is no guarantee in this game. You know, so I don't take it for granted that I'm still, you know, people still want to hire me, still want to work with me. So, yeah, because there's a lot of very, very talented people who just, you know, aren't getting to work in the way that I am and have the career that I've had. So, yeah, I kind of count my lucky stars every every day. So Beautifully said. Um, I wanted to ask you about the um the quibi shooting because you know it's unique did you shoot it all in sequence how long did it take no. you to shoot it it was a it was a four week shoot um obviously just like anything you know we shoot we try and shoot as much as we can in one location and it's sort of dictated a little bit by weather and availability of places so 
you know, there was definitely like, we shoot, we shot, um, you know, based on where we were and where we could get on any given day. So we definitely didn't shoot in order. Um, so yeah, that's always quite challenging, but I think, uh, there was such a kind of, the script was so great. I mean, I remember reading it and just like laughing so much and, um, <laughs> It was quite funny actually, because I was on my way to, I was in Los Angeles and I was like on my way to a meeting and I had about an hour to kill. And I thought, oh, let me just have a little flick through that script that I got in my inbox earlier. And, uh, and I phoned my agent within that, within the hour. I just was like, guys, we've got to do this. This is fantastic. And it was so <laughs> like self-explanatory and sort of like the way that the show was structured, like the writing was just so brilliant. And so it, it, it was quite clear for me quite quickly how to sort of map this character and some of the choices I made. I was like, well, that might be fun. And it kind of inspired ideas for me. So it, um, yeah, it, it's always challenging shooting out of order, but I feel like um, Jordan was such a fun kind of challenge for me. And I was like, yeah, I was kind of really into it quickly. So it kind of yeah. helped and and Kevin and John as well were just so straight away we just so you know committed and like really embraced me and we just became this little trio that was that just kind of fit quite quickly and it was great yeah and um you had obviously you had stunt people but you all also had to um learn at least the choreography of the moves right i had to learn all the choreography was it fun is it something yeah. a lot of, yeah yeah it's a lot of fun it's hard though like on your body <laughs> like after doing the same move a few times on one side like suddenly you're like okay my shoulder is really aching and then the next day you're like, why am I stand like lopsided? Um, <laughs> Cause you only do it on one side all day as they get all their angles. <laughs> but, um, but actually the stunt team were incredible and shout out Deandra, who was my stunt double. She made me look so badass. And to, um, and to Walter as well, he was our stunt coordinator. And uh, basically I was never really fighting uh, say Kevin or the person that I was fighting because oft so, so more so basically when the camera is on me on my face like I'm doing all of that fighting um, and uh, when it's on the other person like they're usually fun fighting my double and it's just yeah. so you know like it's a bit safer for the actors because the stunt um, guys are so great at reacting if you throw like a wrong punch like their whole thing is like being able to move and so i if i throw a wrong punch or kevin throws a wrong punch it might get a bit um messy <laughs> uh, no, so that was, no question. yeah, yeah no so, we, so we worked very closely with the stunt team like i mostly fought kevin's stunt double and he mostly fought mine but there was a couple moments where we had to do some stuff together but uh but yeah we we really um yeah, it was very much like a partnership in that respect, but all the very dangerous stuff, I was more than happy for Deandra to do. I want to open it up to the student because it's really for them. I could chat with you for hours, but it's really for them. So, uh, Mike, can we take it from here and see if we have um, questions? Yeah, we have a question here from Grace Ward, a student from New York. Grace, we've enabled you to start your microphone. What is your question for Natalie? My first question is, what is the biggest thing you look for in scripts when deciding about your roles and parts? Like what are some of the key attributes and what inspires you, excites you about a script? Um, the first thing, I will always read a script through and I guess I, look for, um, the, I look for aspects of the character that firstly, like I understand and can relate to and, um, some, or stuff that, you know, I'm like, oh, that's really challenging. I always look for the challenges, really things that I'm like, oh, that's going to be quite fun to try and discover and find, but really just like as a woman, as a woman of color, I always just want to see that these characters are being written in a rounded, authentic way and not in a sort of superficial, 
um, tropey way. So that's the first thing. I'm like, are you, is this like um, tokenistic or is this, you know, interesting? And it's always fun for me, like, to play people who are complex and, you know, not all good or all bad or all just one thing. So I like to see some variety in the, you know, in the, the character's journey. And, and I guess I ask questions like, can, what, can I, what else can I bring to this? What, how else can I kind of feel out or expand this character beyond what's on the page? And do I think that's exciting? You know, and if it sort of stirs something in me, I'm like, oh yeah, that's kind of cool. Or maybe we should pursue this further. Um, and it, but just generally, it's always fun for me to play kind of badass women because <laughs> it's just fun. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So we actually have uh, one more question from Grace while she's unmuted. Grace, you can go ahead with your second question. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, what's the best experience you've ever had with a specific director and why? And what is the biggest thing a director can do to really help you? Um, as far as communication goes? Okay, oh, great questions. Um, one of the best experiences I've had with a director, uh, it was with um, Mark Mylod on Game of Thrones. Uh, I mean, I'd worked with him a number of times before in previous seasons, but during... Um, the scene, the scene with Grey Worm and Sunday <laughs> when they finally acted on their love. He just took the best care of us. And, you know, we went into rehearsal and essentially he did with us what a intimacy coordinator would do, where we established what our boundaries were, what we didn't want to do, you know, he gave his ideas and then we, I would be like, oh, I'm not comfortable doing that. Or, or I'm like, yeah, that's fine. And the same for Jacob. And he just was so respectful and so wonderful and really just helped us bring out the kind of beauty of that scene and the sort of like, oh, all that, like we, we'd really earned this moment and he treated it with so much respect and treated us with respect as actors and obviously the people having to do this very intimate scene and um you know it it just really was a for such a challenging scene for the obvious reasons like i felt incredibly safe and it was also um just testament to my relationship with jacob and he was uh, our relationship as friends and colleagues like we just kind of had each other's back and then it was just really, we were so happy when we found out that Mark was directing that episode and we were like, oh, it's in the perfect hands. And it really, really was. And he just was so wonderful. And yeah, I couldn't have asked cause that was the first time for me doing a scene like that. And so for me, I, I just was like so grateful and like, I was so proud of it when I watched it and I was like, ah, oh. Thanks, Mark, and <laughs> thanks, Jacob. But we had, it was, yeah, that was really special. And for, in terms of communication, like, I just need people to tell me what's what. Like, I realize that often in this business with actors, they sort of treat us like, we're like these fragile things that you can't be told no or be told something negative. I am, a, I'm like, I'm just kind of real and I just want to know like, what do you need? Like, you don't have to worry about upsetting me. Like, as long as people talk to me respectfully, I don't really mind what the note is. You might say to me, yeah, nothing, I'm not really feeling it. I'm not really feeling what you're doing. I think that we need these things. And like, when it's laid out to me in a clear way, and like, even if it's negative, even if you don't like what I'm doing, like people are allowed to tell me that. I don't... Um, because I think that a set is such a safe space, it's such a sacred space. And, 
you know, like sometimes you have to work stuff out. Sometimes people have to kind of get upset and get frustrated and then find something else, find a new way through. Like that's part of the challenge for me as an actor. I'm like, I'm not afraid of those situations. Although, you know, like we're all human and we have emotions and I'm a sensitive soul just like anybody. But I really hate when people don't tell me the truth and tell me like it's not working <laughs> because, you know, at the end of the day, like I'm the one that's on camera and my director is, is, I guess, in a way, like my, like I'm sort of tethered to them. I'm really looking for their, I'm, I'm an actor like that really wants to hear my director and their thoughts and their feelings and let me know straight up, like what's, what's up and what's, what's not working, what is and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, for me, just being really, just being honest and being, um, respectful you know and that that's it really quite I don't know if that's it's quite simple I think that's great thank you um, we have a question here from Maria Colasanti uh, from our New York campus uh, Maria we've enabled you to start your microphone what is your question for Natalie hi um I just typed it out uh, do you have any advice on handling those situations that you're describing like what if you can't get to the place that they're asking you to get to, you know what I mean? I mean, of course, I mean, how do you handle those situations? I think, um, I think at the end of the day, it's about compromise, you know? And sometimes um, something just isn't working and you just have to be open to trying something else and stepping outside maybe what you perceived the scene to be or that moment to be or that line to mean or whatever. So I don't know. I think it's, it's about it. Cause often I think as, as actors, we can get so connected to a character. So it almost becomes a part of us that, Sometimes when people like people can say something, you know, like, no, that's not, that's not what I was doing, you know, and actually to double down, I sometimes, you know, there's always opportunities where you need to fight for your character. But like, I think that sometimes when it's, it feels like there's so much of a wall there that maybe you just need to try something else. And that's like, you just have to try and practice openness and practice taking a new route um and, and hopefully you will find somewhere that works for both of you um but kind of getting frustrated and angry and defensive i just generally in life i don't really feel like that's particularly productive and doesn't really encourage like creativity <laughs> like particularly it's kind of like a yeah it can sort of um yeah so kind of stop the flow and uh so i try to with breathing and <laughs> you know like try and kind of be like okay i'm trying to listen i'm trying to be open and that's all i can really do and i guess hope for the best <laughs> so thank you for that insight we have a question here from tj mannix uh an instructor from new york uh we've enabled you to start your microphone tj what's your question for natalie uh, well, thank you much, so much for being here. Uh, my question has to do with green screening. And uh, I don't know if this was your first experience working with green screen and how much you had to do that, but I'm just curious about how you were able to remain grounded in the reality of the scene while you were working against green screen for these epic backdrops. Uh, are you talking specifically about Die Hard or about... Uh, maybe more Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, well, the thing about green screen is, is you just, this is, okay. So, you know, when you're a kid and you're like, let's play dragons and knights and you, or you're like, oh, we're like on an adventure. And like, this is basically all that imagination work that we just have as a kid, like, you get to do that <laughs> in front of a green screen. So you often, you can't see, like they might show you a previs of like what kind of the scenery will look like, but often you're using your imagination and um, yeah, it, it can be quite challenging at times, especially in the, the place where I probably find it the hardest is 
in the Fast and Furious movies because, you know, you're in a car often that's in a sound stage that's surrounded by blue or green. And they're like, and then you, on the left, there's a huge explosion. And you're like, eh, like you, there's not really. So some, like, I don't know what it mean, feels like to have a huge explosion happen right next to me, right next to me. <laughs> so it is really just like using your imagination and yeah, and just going for it, actually. You just have to kind of go for it. And often you've got the director being like yelling stuff at you to add to the like energy of it. Um, so yeah, but the fun, what the fun, there's also really fun times where you've got like, for example, in Game of Thrones before the dragons were very big, or no, once the dragons got very big, it was just kind of this poor guy with a green ball on the end of a stick, just kind of running in the distance and we all had to follow it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's not quite as like, like to look at this poor guy running as fast as he can with this kind of green lollipop, it's kind of funny, but we have to play, play it like, oh, wow, there's a dragon. So yeah, it's fun. Like I enjoy it, but um, in Die Hard, obviously you see this ridiculous scene that we did in front of green screen. And yeah, I think that was probably my most unprofessional day on set because I could not stop laughing because it was so ridiculous, the whole thing. And, um, but again, a lot of fun and, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. It's always fun. Excellent. Um, we have a question here from Alina uh, from our LA campus. I will go ahead and ask uh, her question for her, okay. some technical difficulties, but um, she says that uh, you are so natural on screen and are, is asking what are some of the things that you do to connect to the characters you play? Um, ooh. I think for me, preparation is key. Um, I do lots of work kind of before we even get to filming, you know, it's like all that character work, you know, figuring out in any scene, like what my characters, uh, like intentions are and literally per line, I'm quite like methodical with it. I'm like, what is, why is she saying that line? Why is she doing that thing? Mapping the, their journey throughout the entire story, understanding how they feel about the people they're interacting with or the situations they're acting with, and just sort of knowing this person in and out as much as possible. Um, and because I think when you, and then when you know your lines as well, I think once you know exactly what you have to do, like from the script and that gives you a confidence to kind of play and like relax into it. I always feel like there's this moment where like the, the lines and the, and the, the ideas kind of drop in the body, literally physically. I feel like this person's voice, this person's movements, like it becomes second nature. And, um, you know, sometimes it can be inspired by like music or sometimes it's as simple as just putting on their clothing or I don't know, it's, it really depends on different, on, um, on uh, the, the part and the day as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think for me, like preparation and making sure that I really understand the scene and the, that I'm about to do and just like the character as a whole and how they feel about the world and the people around them. Like once I know all of that and I've done that kind of work, it kind of helps me connect to them quicker. Um, but there has been, you know, in a sort of more technical sense, like if I've been doing an accent, for example, there is a real uh, uh, benefit for me when I just like stay in accent all day, because in a way, like I'm kind of staying in character. So I'm not like the person that's living as this, like I'm not like that method where I'm living as this character for three months, but, I think it's just really useful for me to sort of stay somewhere close to who and how they speak, who they are and how they speak so that when I, the cameras start rolling, I'm not reaching really far to, um, to access them again, like after lunch or something. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so, um, so that for me is just like in a more kind of simple, like technical sense that that's something that I find really useful. And my mom often, she'll phone me at work and I'm like in a different accent. She's like, oh, you're at work. And I'm like, yes, you know, or whatever. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have a question here from Courtney Jordan from our LA campus. Courtney, we've enabled you to start your microphone. What is your question for Natalie? Hello. Hi. Hi. I was wondering what the process was like to audition for something, you know, especially as big as like Game of Thrones, which has to be like the biggest TV show of all time. What, what was that like? Um, wow. What was that like? For me, I had been harassing my agent about Game of Thrones. <laughs> I was like, so there's a show I need to, I just really want, if there's ever anything I'm, I'm, right for for it you have to let me know and um so when i got that audition i phoned her up and i'd seen it on a casting site and i was like joe like to my agent in london i was like joe she went i've seen it you've got an audition on wednesday and i was like yes and it was all just like very exciting and then the like reality dawned on me and i was like hmm okay this is a show you really like and you really want this and you're, you can overthink it and then like freak out and then just completely sabotage yourself. So like I said, I just like did as much research as I could. I hadn't, I hadn't kind of got into the books yet. So that's not true. I'd read book one at that point. And so I hadn't met Miss Sunday yet in the book. So I went online and the fandom really helped me with all the breakdowns of all the characters from all the books. And I found Miss Sunday and who she, where she came into the story and I I guess I made choices for her and I thought well this character is a child in the books and I was a woman so I had to kind of just make choices but that still carried the essence of that person that I was reading about online and and I just tried to be as prepared as possible and that's kind of like all I can do the other thing with, with Masande was they told me, they were like, oh no, we just want you to do a standard British accent. It doesn't have to be. And I thought, you know what? This woman is from a different part of the realm and she's speaking another language. Maybe I need to try and get like a, an accent that is like an, uh, it's like an accented English. And so I sort of prepared this accent that to, to be honest with you, I mean, I have no idea what it was even now, but um, I went into the audition and then we did the scene and Robert, who was the casting director um, working for Nina Gold with, with Nina Gold was like, oh, that was great. That was really cool. But you know what? They, um, they, they haven't really quite decided whether the Sunday has an accent or not. And I was like, ah, well, <laughs> I have, I thought, yes this is like the joy of being prepared. And so I did another read with this accent that I'd made up. And um, I walked out and I was like, great. And I sort of just let it go and, you know, and then the rest is history. But, but for me, it's like prepare, preparation, like was so important. And it meant that like, I could be confident when they sort of did this other thing, I sort of considered all the possibilities. Um, and so, yeah, and sometimes it's as simple as like doing a self tape at home with your mum in the kitchen and then sending it off and then hope, like you're just like, oh, okay, well, I did this thing and you just kind of wait to hear. And yeah, and it's, it's, it's very, everything is really different. I mean, for Fast and Furious, a lot of those scenes were like really action scenes, which are quite hard to put on self tape, you know, like that, that's hard to do. And it's like a lot of stage directions and you're going, ah, like, you're crazy or whatever the, you know, scene is. And, and we just had to just try something. And um, yeah, sometimes the kind of preparation, there's not really time for, or it's not very clear what, what preparation you can do. So I guess for me, it was like, okay, learn the lines, learn the, get the accent right or get the whatever right. And then just throw it at the wall and see what sticks and see if they like it. <laughs> I don't know, it's like, it's different for everything, every, every audition. We have a question here from Pietro Barba from our LA campus. Pietro, we've enabled you to start your microphone. What is your question for Natalie? 
Hello, Natalie. Um, so my question is, what would you give an advice to a young director that, let's say, doesn't have that much budget, but that would love to have an established actor on their short film? Like, if that could be an actual possibility, what would that take? Like, how could that have ever happen? I think it happens, though. Like, I, th I think it's, I, I understand why you asked that question, because I think that there, there comes a point where people feel kind of like unattainable almost. But I really do think that there are, pl there are many actors who, you know, who are just, who want to, s to s discover and work with up and coming talent. You know, I've definitely done some shorts and uh, because I just liked the idea and I liked the person that I, I was like, wow, you're really interesting and cool. And, you know, and it, it come, it came both the short films I've done, like they came through my agent and they were like, Hey, we know this might be a long shot, but does Natalie like, would, would she do a short film? And, you know, it's been, a, to be fair, it's been a couple of years since I've done one, but it was such a fun experience and to be able to work with someone who, yeah, is kind of starting out in their career. And I really, yeah, I, I personally think that there are much more, um, there, are, there are many actors who will want to enjoy that process of working with new filmmakers. And, but I think if you're just, I think you just have to try. You just have to like shoot your shot, you know, and you know, who's like, who, I, who is like the dream casting and then shoot your shot. You know, that's what you, all they can say is no. And then you can maybe have like a, a list of people that, you know, you would also love to have and then reach, reach out to them too and see what you get back because who knows? Like, who knows? It all, it, who knows? And, before, and, and another thing as well, like, you might even make this great thing with a unknown actor and, you know, you guys have, it gets really well recognized and really critically acclaimed for this short film that you've entered into a festival and everyone, and now you're on this journey together too. So, you know, there's, there's kind of, yeah, benefits to that as well. But I, I always just say like, what's the best thing shoot your shot let that person know why you want them why they are your perfect casting you know if your script is strong and your idea is strong and your vision is strong i think people really respond to visuals as well and i really enjoy like mood boards and things like that just to give me an idea of um the tone and the colors and the world that you kind of want to create um and if you have any previous work like let people know what you've done and show them what you can do. And that's all you can do at, at that point, you know? And, um, and yeah, maybe someone will be like, hey, that's great and get involved. Um, maybe maybe I'm like, I need to do some short films now. Like I need to get involved. <laughs> it's been a minute. <laughs> Thank you for the encouragement. Uh, we have a question here from Bangiwi Kapolo from our LA campus. Uh, we've enabled you to start your microphone. What is your question for Natalie? Hello. Hi. Yay. Okay. Um, so my question is, you know, um, after Game of Thrones, was it hard to, uh, to like other kinds of roles? Like, you know, obviously that launched you a little bit in the public eye, but was it hard to break away from um, Missandei, who's just so iconic and, you know, everyone kind of knew you in that way and, and get to these other amazing roles and these other really um, complex, uh, interesting roles that you've done so far? I mean, there is always a period of time after you finish something where people will only see you as that thing. Like, that's just inevitable. Um, I think I was slightly in a privileged position where I had this other thing, like I was doing the Fast and Furious franchise. So I was already kind of established in this other thing when I finished Game of Thrones, which is quite a unique 
the not so common position to be in, I, I imagine. Um, and so I kind of had that, that other thing and it kind of, yeah, it kind of happened not too long afterwards. So or it came out like not too long afterwards. I actually, I can't remember the timeline exactly, but I just remember I had some time after the show though, where I was quite, um, I was in this, like I said, privileged, privileged position where I knew that I had that thing coming up and I could really take a moment to decide what do I want to do? You know, what kind of parts do I want to do? How, like I had a whole meeting with my team and I'd said, let's try and send these kinds of scripts and these kinds of characters and just see what's around. And, um, you know, and that is an incredibly unique position to be in. You know, I was sort of like, you know, financially as an actor, I was like, great, I don't have to worry too much for a while. You know, um, I, I can take some time where it's, a, where, where it's not a matter of like, oh, okay, I need to now pay, get money to live. Like it was, I had time. And so I really made the most of it. And um, I guess I just read and read and read and read a lot of things and um, put myself on tape and just sort of seeing what was out there. And then there has, and then it was funny actually, because I, I, there was one point where I did get quite disheartened because there was a couple of things that I really liked and I got quite close to and it didn't work out. And I was just like, ah, oh, like people, is it because they can only see me as this one thing? And, and then while I sort of got a bit down, um, suddenly this opportunity kind of came out of nowhere. And it was something that I'd auditioned for months and months and months before, but months and months and months ago. And I, I, it kind of just like came back around and I thought, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Cause I thought that had gone away and that I hadn't got that thing. And I'm, I'm talking like five months ago, I'd auditioned for it. So it wasn't like, oh, a few weeks ago, it was like, I'd forgotten that I'd even auditioned for it. And so the fact that that came back around was like amazing. And it was like everything that I had been manifesting, you know, I, I tend to, like decide the things that I want for the next, I don't know, year or six months. And I've been craving all of these things. I was like, I want to work back home. I've been living out of a suitcase for however many years. <laughs> I was like, I want to be in London. I want to challenge myself with an American role. I want to have a role that is more of a lead or supporting lead where I have more responsibility. And then four weddings and a funeral kind of came back around and I was like, it's perfect. It was shot shooting 40 minutes in the car from my house. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. And I got to, and it was just so, it, it kind of, it kind of just happened so organically as well. And I, and I, yeah, it was, it was a strange time because I really, at one point was like, oh, it's like people just that, you know, is it because what, what, what is it? Is it because they can't see me anything like there's anything but Miss Ande? Is it too soon? Um, but yeah, I guess I kind of just gave in to the, and just go, okay, you gotta let it go and just see what happens. You know, that's the thing about this, this, this life. It's, you know, there's no guarantees and you, and you kind of have to let go into it a bit. And I, you know, when I was saying before how I count my lucky stars, well, they were shining on me <laughs> then. And so I was, yeah, that happened and it was amazing, so. Thank you. Uh, we have a question here from Leo Newmark uh, from our New York campus. Leo, we've enabled you to start your microphone. What is your question for Natalie? Hi, uh, thank you, Natalie, um, for talking with us. Um, I was wondering about uh, scores. Like, do you ever listen to scores? Because it's actually an interesting idea when you're listening to, to that music. It's music essentially written to complement your acting and the film and the composer is looking at your face, how you're acting, how you're behaving. And, and it's very like, like personal and I guess sort of intimate um, act to sort of write music for someone's acting. So I'm wondering like, like what's your experience with, uh, with composers like listening to the music? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I think that the music is so important and it really helps um, amplify what the actors are already doing and the director is already doing. And um, you know, when that's wrong, 
you really it, and it, it can really make something it can really I don't want to say ruin it but like change it in a way that might not always be what you expected and I, I can't really think I've had that experience really but you know I just remember with Game of Thrones specifically like the score just you know it, it just added to the <laughs> kind of heartbreak of all the you know the warm fuzzy feelings you want and the sort of epicness of it and I yeah I do listen to the score because I really notice when it like generally like not necessarily with my own work but when I'm watching other movies I definitely really I know I notice when people when it doesn't work for me like you know obviously some people will listen to it and think it's amazing or but I definitely notice when I'm like oh I'm not sure about this um I do you know what I really hate is when the music is t trying to tell you how to feel but it's not necessarily being reflected on screen like that's a bit of a pet peeve of mine and um and that happens sometimes but um but generally i i have been lucky enough to have been scored beautifully <laughs> and um generally just felt like those composers really added something and amplified what i was doing and you know so i've been really lucky in that respect but yeah i think I definitely listen to the score and I think um, it's an incredibly important part of, of filmmaking and um, really telling a story, so. Excellent. Uh, we have a question here from Amber Martin. Amber, we've enabled you to start your microphone. What is your question for Natalie? Hi, Natalie. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, I was just going to ask you, do you have the same creative process or approach when you're building a character um, and taking on a role? Like I know you said you like to play badass women. So do you kind of start by viewing them the same or do you do something totally different every time? Well, it, yeah, I, th I think there is something different that happens. I mean, it really depends on the story and what, who they are and what their story is, you know, like my, my character in um, Game of Thrones is badass in a different way to how, badass my character is in Fast and Furious or you know like they're, they're both ultimately yeah I mean you can play badass whatever that is but really it's the real person and their real very real qualities and complexities that make them badass so I, I mean I just I just um, would just try and treat the person uh, or the character and prepare that character as you know and just try and identify their qualities and their or their flaws or whatever and try and create a whole person because you know it's like sometimes when people say oh yeah like she's she's tough like she's a badass and you're like yeah but what is but what is tough like is tough how she stands is tough how she talks is it yes the action or the fights yes but also I think it's in the things that she does and the choices that she makes that makes someone tough like against adversity like what what is their reaction to things so you know i try um i try to just treat each one as an individual person and when you play the truth of a, of a character if they're supposed to be a badass then that will come out you know and um and sometimes they're not, sometimes they're not a badass and like, that's okay too, you know? <laughs> but I definitely, um, I definitely just like enjoy creating women that are, but um, you know, maybe that's my next challenge where I create one that's less so. <laughs> well, we have a question here from Shanae Lewis. Uh, Shanae, we've enabled you to start your microphone. What is your question for Natalie? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, oh okay. Um, so glad to uh, see you. Um, when you. I just wanted to ask, when you first started out in the industry, were there times where you got discouraged along the way? And like, if you did, how did you bring yourself up again and keep going? Uh, yes, many times, many times. Um, how did I keep going? I mean... I have a wonderful support system. I have 
people that really believed in me and I'm lucky enough that those people always kind of rallied around me even when I didn't didn't necessarily believe in myself in the way that I should or could at the time so you know I'm I'm incredibly grateful to many people for for that support um and I think I had to just kind of give myself at, at one point I had to uh, I was making the decision about whether to go back to school and do a degree and try and like you know have something else and and the reason why I made that choice was because I was like I'm a smart person like I can do other things that I enjoy I have lots of interests you know acting is like you know a passion but I you know I thought do I need to just you know have my uh, keep myself you know focused and doing something that was also another creative outlet to be fair it was a very still a very artistic thing and then and then what happened specifically was like <laughs> game of thrones happened i was very much like i'm going back to school and blah 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 and then that happened and my life it's sort of like i feel that fate just decided that now wasn't the time and then you know there have been other times where i've been kind of discouraged and think oh I, you know i feel like the parts that i'm being would ask to audition for are just all really like, you know, is this how people see me? And, you know, it can really mess with your head and your self-esteem and things like that. And, and then I, uh, I guess I have, you have, I have had to work really hard at positive affirmation and like telling myself that, you know, I decide who I am and, I, I am in control of me and my career and like the things that I will do and that I won't do. And, you know, and there's like a, a, like a, a confidence that comes with that. Even when you're like really discouraged and you're like, no, 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 I need to figure out exactly what it is that I want from my career and from, you know, the parts that I do. And if this isn't the thing, I am. A, if this isn't the thing that works out for me, I was like, the idea of giving it up, like, obviously breaks my heart. But like, I'm a, I'm a smart woman. I can do lots of other things. There are lots of other things that I'm passionate about. And my uh, life, I think, has sort of taught me that you know you have to give yourself time. And that just because things aren't happening in the speed that you think it is or in comparison to someone else's timeline, you know, like doesn't mean that it won't or can't happen. And maybe you just need to find a different way to it. And I think there's a lot of solace in that thinking because you just can go, okay, okay, you know, before I get all panicked and you know, start being unkind to myself with my words and my thoughts. <laughs> what it, you know, what, what can I do that is proactive and positive as opposed to, you know, the opposite. So I know like, yeah, it's, there's no guarantees in this game, but I think that our, the way that we speak to ourselves and the way that we, you know, encourage ourselves really matters. And like I said, also having a support system and a, and a community because nine times out of 10, a lot of your peers are all going through a similar thing and um, you can find comfort and, you know, with, with those people um, and take those risks together and, you know, bounce ideas off the wall. Um, I also think like now, like young people, with all the technology that we have now, just at our fingertips, like people are making movies on short films that are like, um, on short films on mobile phones, which are making it into festivals, you know, and launching whole careers. And I think there is also something really great about going, okay, like, all right, maybe I'll write something. Maybe I'll get my friend who I know does sound or my friend that does cameras. Like my, my next door neighbor is a cameraman, which I didn't know when I bought the house, but I was like, great like maybe if I'm like let's get this guy and we can just go and shoot something I don't know like it's just about being keeping proactive and trying to generate something I don't know 
with the, either within yourself or literally physically with, with a piece of work. So. Natalie, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to turn it back it's over to Tova. I know that she has a few questions uh, okay. before we close out. Okay. Natalie. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so good to have you back. What do you think is your quality that contributed the most to your success? I don't know. Um, something that, <laughs> that's such a like, a that's a question. Um, I think that, do you mean as like a person or an actor or just like anything? Because I think, okay. the, yeah, I think that, you know, I'm a very determined person and um, I think that I, I'm, I'm sort of a hard worker and I'm really determined and I guess that I'm just like willing to get, you know, in the trenches and roll my sleeves up and graft, you know, so I think that's probably what's kept me going. I mean, in terms of an, as like as an actor, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of hope that there's something that people can connect to in my performances. Um, something that someone has said to me before is they're like, oh, you know, it's very clear that you have a strength about you that's really, um, you can see on camera. And I was like, oh, really, thank you. That's like a huge compliment. But they were like, there's also this vulnerability um, behind it. And, uh, and that, I was like, that was a really nice, lovely compliment. Like that people have kind of said to me before. And I, I guess I, I guess I, if that's the thing that m means that people connect to what I'm doing, then I'm very grateful that that's coming through. Um, but yeah, I don't know really. I think just like my ability to kind of like, just keep grafting and try anything until I find where I need to be, <laughs> then maybe that's it. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and now I have a fun question for you because I watched all the, you know, all the episodes, of course, of Die Hard, and I laughed a lot. <laughs> and, uh, but I want to ask you, because it looks like when you came in to be in the school, you still, you already were kind of badass a little bit. And then Kevin at the end finds basically um, all the right moves. So it's the message is that we all basically have it in us to be action heroes. If we just had the confidence, the attitude and doing it for somebody we love. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I stand by that message, absolutely. I think, I think um, you know, the saying that not all heroes wear capes, you know, I think that we can all be heroes in different ways. Um, but yeah, you just have to have the courage to kind of go for it. And um, I, uh, I love that kind of through that message through the through the piece is that, you know, Jordan's just like, I've got I've got to do the work, I've got to prove myself, I'm gonna, you know, and where Kevin is kind of like at times making excuses and kind of doubting everything, you know, and there's that scene that they have and he's like, you're right, I just need to like, in a way, like take the ball by the horns or something less, you know, I don't know, uh, another phrase for that. But, you know, uh, <laughs> I think that that decision to, you know, go for the thing, you know, makes us all capable of anything. And if you want to be an action hero, then I guess you can do that too, if you put your mind to it. <laughs> and he does. It's a commitment. It's a commitment at the end, really. Yes, yes. You know, just as your commitment to being an actor and preparing and so on and so forth. I want to thank you very, very much for taking time and um, really giving us the benefit of your uh, skills and experience and um, parted to the students and uh, the, we all really, really appreciated that you took oh. the and the effort to come and help. Well, us. it's my, my pleasure, honestly. When I saw uh, the kind of like talent and amazing people that have been on 
come and spoken with you guys and been on this this q a i was like they want me okay great i mean i, I was incredibly flattered and excited to be included so you know I, I feel like i still have so much to learn and i'm you know we talk about experience i'm like oh i feel like i have so many things to still experience but uh, well you'll yeah. come back you'll come I, back i <laughs> hope so this will, that, it's been really nice and hopefully like when the world isn't sick anymore we could do it in person and not exactly. over zoom but um yeah i really hope I'm, i i get so excited of talent that's coming into the industry because you know i think this year has shown us that the world is having a shake up and like it's like you guys that are gonna be the ones to like take hold of that new that shift that's happening so it's exciting and i'm happy that i could Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we wish you all the best. Thank you. Stay well and safe, everyone. And we hope to see you again. And we're certainly looking forward to seeing all your work in the future. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.